and this is where we get to see the river itching in all its glory. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Easton in Hampshire. It's about two and three quarter miles to the northeast of Winchester. And today we're going to be doing a roughly two and three quarter, three mile circular route to the north and west of the village. We're going to see a couple of pubs, two churches, the River Itchin on more than one occasion and hopefully a few other interesting things along the way. So do join us. Now Logan's got his fleece on because I'm filming at the end of October. It's quite autumnal this morning although the sun is beginning to peak out so hopefully it's going to warm up later on. Are we ready? He's ready. Let's go. Well I've parked my car by the church which is just behind me here so let's have a little look at it and there it is the uh, the church of St Mary originally called the church of Our Lady and according to uh, historic England it was built around about 1170 and it's on a terrace really above the river Itchin a couple of very impressive Norman doorways on the north and south sides the tower at the west end was added in the 13th century. I believe there are six bells there. There was a big restoration between 1866 and 1872. You can see there's a date on the drain pipes there. And there was a rectory to the north of the church, but that was demolished in 1853. But I love the, the little uh, addition on the, the right hand side there. We're now going to head through the village and then eventually make our way out into the, the countryside. Now just opposite the church to the south is this uh, rather marvellous, uh, impressive building. And there's a plaque actually right next to it. Uh, I think it's called Dimmock House. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And obviously the plaque tells you all about the history. I believe it was built with stones from the old manor house that used to be here. Oh, there's another quite stunning house on the left hand side there. Look at those two. I wonder if those are greyhounds or whippets standing either side of the door. <laughs> I could do with a couple of those at home. Well, this really is a quite enchanting village. These beautiful thatched cottages over there and then just turning around this is our first pub of the day the cricketers inn i'm afraid i don't know too much about it and sadly i see there's a note to the side of the door saying we are closed until further notice whether that's got anything to do with the covid19 or whether it's more of a long-term thing i don't know anyway let's continue with our little wander through the village ah, another Another sweet cottage, the old manor house. Okay, we're going to take a little footpath that's going to cut through the middle of the village, through here. What have we got here hiding behind the bush? You're a magnificent looking uh, 
beast with all your harem. <laughs> I wonder what sort of breed those are, but they're very, very colourful, aren't they? Beautiful red top. Smashing. Now making our way through the eastern end of the village. Property there, the old Bat and Ball. Now that used to be a pub. Uh, it was closed in the 20th century early. And then uh, oh, a telephone box with a telephone in it. It's an unusual sight these days. And here we are, our second pub of the walk already. The Chestnut Horse timber frame with brick infill. Possibly 16th century. I'm pleased to say that one looks as though it's open, so that's where we will probably finish up at the end of the walk. Got some really pretty properties here. What have we got over there? The old post office. And then just turning around, Goff's Oak, another thatched house there with love the green tangling round and the, the white paint and the black timber frames. Quite exquisite. Now if you're going to be doing this walk, I know a few people do follow these uh, videos, this is a sign to look out for. So we've come through the village and it's a green public footpath sign and we're now going to follow that down this little gravel track and this is eventually going to take us to the River Itchen. And we actually pass a property called Flint Cottage. first sighting of the river Itchin, or part of it. I think the main river's a few yards further on. So clear the water here. This really is your typical Hampshire chalk stream, free flowing with the gravel bottom. And look, <laughs> looks like they've got a little dog dip there. Now it's perhaps a little bit chilly to ask Logan for a demonstration today. And this is our second bridge. And this is where we get to see the river itching in all its glory. Oh, isn't that beautiful? With the sun glinting off the water. And really is free flowing. We've had quite a bit of rain recently. I think this is one of my favourite rivers in Hampshire. Oh, I can just about make out uh, there's something white in the further, oh it's a swan. <laughs> I thought it was an egret for a second. But these sort of um, moments you can just sort of stand here for five or ten minutes and just take it all in. Really is quite peaceful. We're now across the, the Ritchin, now on the northern side, and in a tiny little village, almost a hamlet of Martyr Worthy, our second church of the day, and that's just behind me here. Quite similar in ways to the church at Easton, and that it's uh, you know 12th century. This is the church of St Swithin, and it is mentioned in the Doomsday Book. Single cell, nave and chancel, obviously a 12th century Norman style, north and south doorways, flint with stone dressing. Again, there was a big restoration, this time in 1866 with the uh, 
Aspidal chancel rebuilt in Norman style. It's got a wooden framed bell turret that was added in 1871. I believe it's got three bells. And just spotted here, right on the um, right hand side of this oh, terrific uh, Norman door, there's your scratch dial or mass dial. You can still just about make it out. And that's where they would have stuck the stick in in the days when there weren't clocks and so folk would know what time service started. Let's go and have a look around the back of the church. Well just behind the church to the north the big building there I think that's the manor house but just panning around <laughs> rather gruesome looking objects in the churchyard some variety of um, honey fungus I guess and then again another variety here with the glistening in the, uh, the sunshine we're now going to leave Martyrworthy and start heading westwards we're actually following an old route the Pilgrim's Way which is a 119 mile route from uh, Canterbury to Winchester so I'm just going to follow this little footpath that so, say, takes us away from the church. Um, there are some cows in the field but in fact the footpath bears to the left and there is some fencing so we don't have to meet them. Ah, what have we got over here? Looks like a boundary stone, doesn't it? Now regular viewers will know I love it when I come across boundary stones but now this is actually in private uh, grounds that's the manor house land on the other side of that wire mesh just trying to see what's on there w e 1826 i don't know what the w and e is winchester or worthy east eastern i don't know the only thing i would say it's quite a modern looking stone it doesn't look that well worn it looks quite modern and it certainly doesn't appear on an ordnance survey map well, we'll tick that one off anyway. <laughs> just about to cross a, a little road if I followed the road it would take me back to Easton but I want to carry on going west towards Abbotsworthy and in fact this little signpost tells me the number of different routes that were actually on uh, St Swithin's Way well that's a 34 mile route from Farnham to Winchester it's actually part of the Pilgrim's Way St Swithin was a 9th century Bishop of Winchester we're also on the Itchen Way, which is the 30 mile route that basically follows the river. And also we're on the Allen King Way, that's the uh, 42 mile route that links the Roman strongholds of Porchester and Winchester, named after an early member of the Hampshire Ramblers Association. But isn't that a lovely picture through there? We can see the river and in the far distance the uh, tower of um, the Eastern Church. two totally different opposite bits of the environment if you know what I mean. To my left here we've got the Serene River Itchen. So it's 26 miles long. Its source is um, a place called Cheriton which is just south of uh, New Oldsford and it eventually flows down to Southampton Water. But you can probably hear the noise in the background if I turn around you can hear the M3 motorway 
unfortunately there's a little underpass so we can go under it rather than over it. we well, made my way to uh, Abbotsworthy. We're not really going to have a look too much around uh, that particular village because we're going to start dropping south and then heading east back towards Easton. But we've got another great glimpse of the, the river here. Isn't that quite enchanting? Beautiful. Hopefully the sun's not going to glare too much. That little bridge is on um, private land, but we're going to cross the river shortly over a, a stone bridge close to the mill. Okay, well, we're right by the um, Abbot's Worthy Mill, and there's the footpath for the Itchen Way and all the other ways, but we're not going to go down there. Instead, we're going to head south over the river and eventually make our way back to uh, Easton. Now, there is a helpful little information board here. What I'll do is I'll put down a few photographs and then if you want to read them, you can freeze the, the frame. A uh, little bit of information about Mill Lane and then the mill. What else have we got here? Something about the scallop shell sign as well. Okay, well, let's make our way over this little stone bridge. And hopefully we should get some glimpses of the mill very shortly on my left. And sure enough, there is the mill itself. Obviously in private hands now. And uh, I did see a photograph of what it looked like in its former glory. And obviously, presumably that's the owner or sorting out the garden. And this, uh, as I keep on going on about how clear the water is. But, um, can't see too many fish. And if I just slowly pan round, that's where I've come from. And the other side, again, love the willows on the on the left there. A shame you can just hear the motorway still. <laughs> you can never fully get away from humanity, can you? we're going to say goodbye to the River Itchen or the last little bit that we're going to see. Still in full flow and we're actually going to go by um, what's the old fulling mill. It looks a bit bizarre really because you feel as though you're going through someone's garden but it's definitely a public footpath and uh, still in the far distance there I can make out what looks like an old wooden water wheel. Brilliant. Back under the motorway we go. That's why it's gone a little bit echoey. And hopefully there should be a little footpath here on the left. Yeah, and this will take us back eventually to Easton. We're very much on the homeward leg now some terrific views looking north from a little ridge that goes uh, along the top. In the far distance, the building there is Worthy Park House. That was built in 1773. It became Princess Mead School in 1999. And then just panning around the field. Looks as though it's been planted with winter wheat by the looks of things. And then turning right, far distance, that white house there is the, uh, the old rectory of the uh, Eastern Church. 
Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up or a like and do make a comment. And if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a super walk today in the autumnal sunshine. We thought we'd do our end bit right by the River Itchen, which was looking quite beautiful today. We're off to the Chestnut Horse Pub for some light refreshment. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Thank you.